Do you remember watching this series? You, yeah. How good was how good was Rick Barry? <laughs> So I wanted to take it in a little bit different direction. Um, I know on TV, everyone's talking about what's going to happen, who's going to play, mm-hmm. what position, you know, what part in in the in the games, uh, who has more pressure. I want to talk about. I want to talk about us, like game day. You wake up. Are you thinking about the game? Right now, yes, mm-hmm. because uh, I've been there before, sitting in front of the TV, uh, watching the game, yeah. feeling the game, and checking out the official. Uh, well, checking out the officials, you know, that's my main concern. Okay. So, you, are you thinking? Are you thinking about the officials literally, like? Before the game, like man, I wonder how they're gonna call it. I mean, yes, because I've seen this play out before. Okay, <laughs> you know, not saying you know it can't be four games or five games, mm-hmm. but uh, you know when you run it to seven, a lot more people are looking, and also you know the revenue goes up. That's what the, that's what the NBA wants. They want that. But that ain't what I want. No, know? I don't want that either. I want the best team. I understand. They go out and show their strength. You right. Know? And I believe right now that the Warriors do have the strength, understand, to accomplish this. Absolutely. So now, do you have a routine? Do, is there, do you, okay, I got a certain shirt, hat. Like, what, do you, what are you wearing during a game? Well, I, I don't get full Warrior gear. Yeah, you know what right, I mean? Right. I'll either have the shirt on yeah. or just the hat. Okay. You know? Because uh, you know, you don't want to overpack yourself. You right, know? right. <laughs> Do you don't go full on no, no, sweats and uh-uh, no uh-uh. paint your face. No. Okay. But like I say, shirt or the hat. Okay. One just, of the two. Just keep it simple. Now, if I'm on the road, yeah, I, I'm wearing both. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that that brings to my next question. Where are you watching the game at tonight? Where are you, where are you going? I mean, do you have do you go to a sports bar? Do you watch it at home? Well, for the past uh, what three years, I've been watching it at home. Mm-hmm. You know, in the comforts of my own bedroom. I understand mm-hmm. with my big screen. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, high def. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know the whole bit. You know, yeah. that's where I feel comfortable at. You know, okay. sometimes I'll migrate into the living room, understand, you know, and catch a little bit more of the game. Yeah. But uh, the game's on at least two TVs. You okay. Know? So if I switch rooms, I'm not missing anything. Right. Oh, okay. I yeah. like that. Because one thing about the Warriors, when you're watching this team play, if you take your eye off, all of a sudden you're going to hear, ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's either one hell of a pass, one hell of a shot, mm-hmm. uh, whether if the you know clock's running down, I understand, or early. Yeah. And the way Steph has been shooting, understand, like I say, pick him up, coming across half court. Yeah. Because he may pull, you know. Something and, out of his hat. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, one player in that I can remember that played for the Supersonics, Fred Brown. Mm-hmm. Okay. When that, yeah, that's when old it, school. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. old school. When that brother come across half court before they had the three-point line, mm-hmm. he would ride and dot your eye. Yeah. You know. That's what made him so dangerous. Yeah. And, you know, he got yeah. the nickname uh, downtown. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he could shoot it from anywhere, you know, once he gets past half court. 
And Steph Curry has that uh, ability to do that with gracefulness. Yeah, you know? right. Now, is there a reason why you watch it at home versus it, it, are there a lot of people? You're inviting people over. Or you say, you know what, I just need to. I, it just me and my TV and a couple other people, me and my sons, and that's it. I just need to focus. I don't need, want a lot of hoopla going on. Well, that's been, you know, uh, my uh, gut feeling and my peacefulness mm -hmm. you know, yeah, right. for the past few years. Yeah. It's watching it, like I say, at home yeah. with my sons, understand, yeah. or a few people that may drop in. Yeah, you know. right. Uh, it's been re very rarely that I would go over to someone else's house to watch the game. Yeah. Because nine times out of ten, I understand, you know, when the Warriors take it, you know, they feel bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, because I remember when we were younger, we used to watch the fights, and it was a big barbecue. There's a lot of people over. It was an event. So now it's your squad. Is it because back then you really didn't have – Somebody you were absolutely pulling for, this was your guy? Is there a reason why, like, back then? Well, you hit it right on the nose, right. you know. Uh, what you just said, uh, you know, comes into the play. You yeah. Know? I wasn't really focused on an individual team, mm -hmm. you know, except for the Warriors. Yeah. But, you know, at that time, they wasn't good. Yeah. You know. <laughs> right. You know, still thick and thin. Yeah. I was sticking with them, you right, know what right. I mean? And uh, they took a lot of beating, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But a lot. I'll, yes, yeah. <laughs> but I supported them. Yes, you know what I mean, which makes me a good warrior fan. Absolutely, you know, win or lose, you know, I'll sit there and take the punishment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> by myself. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, in reality, hey, game's over. There's another game to be played. So great segue because that was going to be my next question. They lose. What are you doing? What do you do next? Analyze the game. <laughs> yeah. Now, See where they lost it at. Now, do you watch ESPN, Sports Center, post game after they lose? Or do you switch it and watch a movie? Like, you know what? Let me just. Well, if they lose, I'll sit back and let that marinate. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, you know what I mean? I can't watch you know, ESPN, no. you know what I mean? Or, or Sportnet. You know what I mean? Yeah. To get that negative feedback. You're right. You know right. what I mean? I got to let it sink in first. <laughs> You're right, you know what right. I mean? And then I'll go back myself and analyze it. Where'd they lose it at? Yeah. On the line? Mm -hmm. Was it bad calls that we obviously can see on TV? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially on the replay. Yeah. That the referees missed that call. Are they making a big deal about it? Right, mm -hmm. right. And, you know, past history, referees really never owned up to, I missed that call. Right. Yeah, and they tried that late in the game, uh, kind of exposing the officials. They, I think they stopped that because they felt like, you know what? Well, let the truth be known. I, you know, I agree. Either that or don't show us no replays on the shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Which so, would uh, probably yeah, take yeah. a lot of people off. Because, yeah. You know, right. They're giving you all angles, mm -hmm. you know. And believe it or not, you know, eight out of ten times when Steph Curry shoots, he's fouled. Yes. And uh, he may get 2% of that, which ain't good enough, I understand, you know what I mean, in a tight game. It looks like Steph is embellishing, kind of like some of the other guys. But I think a lot of times because they get underneath his feet, he's literally shooting and trying to move his feet out of the way because guys are crowding his space or taking his arm out. That's what I see. Well, you, yeah. you, you got a point there, yeah. you know. And that's something to understand. It has to be addressed prior to the game, during the game, mm -hmm. and especially at halftime. Yeah. If these referees are not going back and looking at tape quickly of what they missed, we got a problem. Yeah. So let me ask you this now. They win. What do you do next? I'll watch everything on, <laughs> <laughs> on ESPN, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. Sports and Nick, you know what I mean? You're the phone, yeah. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> and also, again, I'm yeah. still analyzing the mm -hmm. game, understand, to make sure that, hey, what was done was right. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Where the, what adjustments are going to make? What, what are some of the analysts talking about? Yes. Um, yeah. And for me, it comes down to free throw shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think there's a team around that's won 100 percent of free throw shooting in a game where everybody hit their shot. Right. 
But, you know, that has to narrow. Yeah. Because, hey, you can lose that game in the first quarter by missing three free throws. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? End of the game, you end up losing by, what, four? Yeah. And you didn't miss three? That's a difference right there. I think another differentiator is rebounding. So let's talk about rebounding. Okay. Tristan Thompson, does he concern you? Not if you put a body on him. You know, the way he gets his rebound, he roams on the sand, and he's a good reader. Mm -hmm. He reads the shot coming off the board. That's what makes him, uh, you know, hard to stop on offensive, like I say, uh, shooting. But if you follow him, put a body on him, uh, box him out, he's going to go over your back. And once you get him in foul trouble or get him hesitating, right there you got the edge. I think what they have to do as well is because I know a lot of teams, I'm sure everybody in the Eastern Conference, all the teams they went up against, he was right up there on their scout board. We got to keep him off the glass. Clearly they were unsuccessful. So, Because the number one, you need – personnel to be able to do it Correct. If you don't have the right guys to keep him he's still going to get his but I think what the Warriors have been doing and I've noticed this throughout the season if they can't get a rebound they're just tapping it out good so move. If, good move right so if I can't get two hands on it and secure it I'm going to make sure you don't get it Tristan by tapping it away from you I don't need to both ends. so if I don't get possession you're not yeah. getting possession and that's something that I've seen a lot more this year, I understand, than I've seen in previous years. Yeah. And that's big men tapping the ball out instead of corralling it. But, yeah, you know Bogut, I mean? Bogut was pretty good at it. So I give yeah. him that. I give Bogut that. He, he, right. he was good at tapping the ball out. But, but there's yeah. a lot more teams doing that yeah. that I've seen this year, mm-hmm. you know, which makes it effective, I understand. And if, if you're effective, keep doing it. Right. Just tap it out. Let, if it goes out of bounds, you're able to reset your defense. Uh, if it goes to the other team, again, you got all five guys to be able to rearrange themselves and get into place. Mm-hmm. Or you might tap it out and start the break. So either way, keeping it out of his hands, keeping him off the line, because, again, you're talking about free throws. He's a better free throw shooter than in the past. Correct. That last Celtics yeah. game, he was like 8 for 10. Yeah. So before, that was something we could hang our hat on where he got to the line and just looked uncomfortable. But in watching his free throw shooting, it's different. So I could tell people have been working with him. So, Well, that's good news for all big men. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? They right. shouldn't be a liability, I understand. Right. The way you bring in that unnecessary foul to put him on the line. Right. You know? Now, our three bigs, I understand, can shoot free throws. And that's an asset to the Warriors team that has not been there for years. Right. Yeah. So, what's the final score? I would say probably uh, 117 to 97. Ooh. Okay. All right. Uh, I got a little closer. I got 109 to 101. So I do think they get in the hundreds, but I feel like it may be a, a slow start going both ways, teams feeling each other out, and then it'll pick up midway in the first half and then carry on through the third quarter and then slow down a bit when everyone tightens up and adjustments start to be made on top of each other. Well, that's been proven, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the Warriors always have had a good third quarter. Yeah. And Cleveland yeah. should be concerned about that. Right. You know what I mean? And we come out with a good, clean th- uh, you know, third quarter, uh, it's a wrap. I, I just hope they do not have a – the second quarter, the halfway through the second quarter always concerns me, especially when they make subs. Well, that's when Iguodala, Sean Livingston, mm-hmm. David West, McCall, if he gets in, could make the difference. We get 6 to 12 points out of that second squad, understand? We're in it. Yeah. And their defense concerns me because I don't want the first five and toward the Warriors to win that. And then their second five comes in and gives them a shot in the arm. I yeah. want to make sure that 
our reserves come in and do the job on your Darren Williams, on your Kyle Corvers, and being able to do their homework and make sure those guys are all accounted for. Because the last thing you want is a guy like Kyle Corver banging out two, three, four threes, you know, that which can make the difference. Well, he game. can't take you off the dribble. So no. one thing about him, understand, you guard him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you do that, and Darren Williams, he you know, he's been hitting the tray mm-hmm. yeah, that last series. Yeah. Understand? But that's not him. Right. You know, keep him off of there. Yeah. You know. Keep him in that mid-range. Keep right. him out of paint. And you know, if you do that, understand, then, hey, you've done your job. You know, patience with David West in the post, understand? Start cutting. Get your layups, understand? Uh, everybody has to get involved. And I think the Warriors, understand, have enough tools, understand, to get involved. Yeah. And like I say, everyone's hungry, you know. Uh, Iguodala, understand, you know, has something not only to prove, understand, but he's a player. Yeah. You know, and he will definitely direct that second team if he's on the floor at that particular time. Yeah. I'm looking for Clay Thompson to step up. Mm. You know, not saying, you know what I mean, that, you know, he's out of the mix. He's been playing a lot of D on a lot of good off guard, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, you get him flowing. Six to twelve points in that first quarter. Understand? Look out. Yeah, and I think it'll enhance his defense as well. Oh yes. Well, so what are you going to do now between now and and tip off? Well, I'm gonna get my snacks ready. Okay, get your snacks ready. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, sit back, understand, and uh, wait for the build up. Are you gonna watch pregame and all that? Or are you gonna just jump right in when it when tip off? Well, I got to catch the pregame okay. because, uh, you know, no matter what they're talking about, yeah. you understand, Warriors are a home team. They are road Warriors. They have proven that this year. I don't care how Last good you years. are. Yeah. I mean, they can win on the road, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And don't count them out no matter how much they're down yep. or how much they're up because they can increase or de- decrease at any time. Yep. Every team that they played this year brought the A plus game. Very good point. And uh, you know the Warriors prevail. Yeah. Now a team like this, understand, is hard to beat. Now we're missing a coach, understand, that's in the background, but the organization that's around him feeds off that. Yeah. Let's make sure that I I, I feel like. Um, Let's just make sure Mike Brown, There, I think there'll be three or four moments where he's going to have to make some instinctual decisions. Hopefully he presses the right buttons. That's what I'm looking for. There's going to be moments, do I leave a guy in? Do I take him out? M- certain matchups. And that's where obviously he can lean on the staff. But, you know, Coach Kerr's not, not going to be there for him to, to bounce ideas off of him. So, Well, he, he's been right on the side of Kerr. Yeah. He knows, understand, when somebody gets a mental lap, blow that whistle, understand, and get a timeout and correct that right away. Mm-hmm. You don't wait for two or three plays later, understand, when all of a sudden they ran six points right quick, Yeah, understand, to get you deeper in the hole that you may be in or narrow the gap, understand, that you once had or the yeah. margin you just had, you know. Yeah. So I think he has that DNA now. Okay. You know what I mean? To blow that quick whistle, understand, and get everyone back online. Uh, like I say, Ian Clark is going to be key tonight coming off the bench. Sean Livingston, Iguodala, uh, David West. Uh, who am I missing? I, I don't think they go any further than that. You know, you're going to have to keep it tight just because Cleveland and the rotations – I don't know if they're going to open up their bench to a 10-man t- a roster. They might keep it to nine. They may keep it to eight. So watch the rotations. That's what you want to keep an eye on. You need certain matchups. So if LeBron goes back in unexpectedly, certain guys are going to have to go back in because you don't want LeBron feasting off your second unit. So You got a point there. Definitely All right. Point there. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, tune in, understand, yeah. uh, yep. when the game is over. Uh, I'm looking for not only a good game, understand, but 
hopefully a well officiated game. Absolutely. Well, there you have it in black and white. Please subscribe. Right on. All right. Be looking at you.